We need to learn about the example and the teaching of Jesus as the authoritative source for moral teaching. And especially we need to talk about the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 to 7. So Jesus as a moral authority. What does that mean? Well, Christians believe that Jesus is the ultimate source of moral authority. As one of the persons of the Trinity, he has equal authority to God the Father, yet as a human being, as the incarnation of God, he is able to communicate his teachings effectively to humanity. So you can see that the, the link there to Trinity and incarnation, the fact that he is God, but also completely human, is what gives him his moral authority ultimately. So that's the answer to the question. Now let's have a look at some of the teachings and some of the um, some of the uh, his examples. Now, while he was alive, many were unsure about the authority. Many questioned it because there were already laws. There was already the Torah. And to question those laws was a great sin. Ultimately, uh, was one of the reasons that they wanted to kill Jesus. However, Jesus himself there said, do not think that I have come to abolish the law, the Torah or the prophets. I've come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Catholics believe that Jesus built on the law, built on it, the law of Moses given in the Old Testament. He fulfilled it by following it himself, by explaining its true meaning and by teaching people how to obey it as God would want. Catholics believe then that as the incarnate son of God, Jesus has the authority of God. He has the authority to pass judgment on and even update the laws in the Torah. Through his teachings and examples, Catholics can learn how to treat each other and how to behave as God wants them to. For these reasons, Jesus is obviously a hugely important source of moral teaching for Christians, but not Jews. So we mustn't get mixed up here. Now, the Sermon on the Mount is essential. The Sermon on the Mount is a speech Jesus gave to his followers, as described in Matthew's Gospel. It covers many different topics and includes some of Jesus's best known moral teachings. And it begins with the Beatitudes. It's a list of sentences which all start, blessed are the, for example, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God, and so on. These eight blessings teach Catholics what characteristics um, will be rewarded by God. It's clear that those with a good heart or those who have suffered in life through no fault of their own will be blessed by God. So the emphasis isn't on following rules as such, but on having a gentle nature and doing the right thing and following the following the rules in with your with your heart as well as um, just uh, as well as as well as the obedience to the word of the law. Later on in the sermon, Jesus refers to the righteousness of the Pharisees and the scribes and tells how others must not follow their example if they want to get to heaven. In the Gospels, the Pharisees, a certain sect of, of Jews, were overwhelmingly concerned with holding up the law, even when it seemed to um, contrast with uh, love towards people. Jesus is making it clear that the, 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 the love comes first. And the, the reason for the law is love. So there's also a, a, a list of phrases that begin, you have heard it said, but I say, and this is important. Jesus is quoting the Old Testament and he's, he's he, uh, updating it is, is one way of looking at it. He's saying, you, you know, you've heard it said that you shall not commit adultery. We hear that, don't we? It's the sixth commandment. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. You've heard it said that you shall not murder. But I say to you, anyone who has anger in his heart to his, towards his brother has already murdered. So that's another part of his um, of it. So Jesus uh, got God having the desire to for god having the desire to commit adultery or to or just the anger is 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 just as immoral as actually murdering and committing adultery itself okay so it's what's in your what's in your heart as well as your actual external actions now jesus also teaches the our father during the sermon on the mount and that's the only formulaic prayer that jesus gave so it's obviously essential and 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 then we have uh, the golden the golden rule which um uh, is, is also in the, the Sermon of the Mount. In everything, do unto others as you would have them do to you. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's another example of his moral teaching. Um, and then, of course, we have his contrasting teaching with the Old Testament. There are some things he says, for example, turn the other cheek. You've heard it said, an eye for an eye um, and a tooth for the tooth. But I say to you, if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other 
also. Now, the rec- it's a bit complicated, that one, but for the sake of the GCSE, just learn this. Jesus says, turn the other cheek in contrast for, um, in contrast to revenge. So Jesus here is completing the old law. The original eye for an eye rule was a limit on vengeance, saying, you know, if someone takes your eye, you may take no more than his eye. So it was quite a good way, really, of limiting the endless cycle of violence. But Jesus challenges us to say we must even forgive that. However, Jesus himself states that the commandments of the Jewish Torah will remain in force until heaven and earth pass away. So he does, he's not telling his followers to ignore the old law, but he's just questioning the importance of certain laws. And he's, he's, he's saying that he wants us to have pure hearts. It's the purity of heart that, that is the focus here. Okay, so now we can look at, uh, again, some examples of Jesus's moral authority. He taught and gave the example of forgiveness, even on the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's essential. He um, spent time with and forgave outcasts such as Zacchaeus up the tree. If you don't know that story, please go and read it. Uh, And and again, we've got all this um, Beatitude Sermon on the Mount stuff as well. So let's put some, some of these ideas just now into some short paragraphs jesus taught his followers the golden rule let's get that in there to treat others how they would wish to be treated he gave them a new commandment love one another as i have loved you in the sermon on the mount he taught them to be peacemakers and to turn the other cheek so you can see how all that information we've got we've just squished it down into a few well embedded quotes in sentences through his example he taught them to forgive others to love outcasts and to love with self-giving agape even to the point of death notice we're trying to use here good re vocabulary now it is important when we're talking about jesus on moral authority to say why it is the ultimate source and this is of course to do with the fact that he is the incarnate god that he is god himself but he is also completely human so those those two ideas are are really vital when we're talking where this about where this authority comes from but when we're saying what this moral teaching is This is what we need to be mentioning. We need to be talking about the Sermon on the Mount. We need to talk about the Golden Rule, talk about the New Commandment, um, and give some examples of what he did. He taught people to forgive others, to love the outcasts like Zacchaeus and the tax collectors and the prostitutes, and to love with self-giving agape even to the the point of death. Now, I've got a little um, cartoon here, which you might like to copy for notes. This has helped me remember. Here we have Jesus, Jesus who is love. He is God himself made man, and he, he gave us the golden rule, treat each other as you want to be treated. He gave us the new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. And then we have the, the Sermon on the Mount. This is Jesus up a mountain. And by the way, whenever we see Jesus up a mountain, we should be thinking straight away of Moses, because Moses goes up the mountain to get the law, doesn't he? He goes up the mountain to get the old law, the Ten Commandments. So when Jesus goes up the mountain, his followers straight away would be thinking, hold on, this is the new Moses giving us a new law. And indeed he does. He said, blessed are the peacemakers. There he is. There's the peacemaker making peace between these two people and turn the other cheek. We also have the many examples of Jesus's moral authority through his own life. He said, Father, forgive them from the cross. And he offered his love to outcasts. He sought out sinners, not to say that their sin was good, but to, have to, but to forgive them and bring them back into communion uh, with, with God. He atoned with, with them. He didn't ignore them. He spent time with the, 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 the outcasts. Okay, so uh, I hope that was hope that was helpful. We've, we've done our 10 minutes there. All of that was revision for you. Well done.